Uh, I'm going to open us up with a quick word of prayer, and then we are going to get started, all right? Pray with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and Lord, we thank you for the rain, for you tell us in Matthew 8, 27, that even the winds and the waves obey you. And so this morning, Lord, as we commit our time to you, we pray that you would be here with us. Pray that you would allow us to grow in the world of understanding sport and ministry, and Lord, may we always live on mission. Lord, I pray for our upcoming speaker after the Power Tracks this morning, Shep. I pray that you would bless him in a mighty way as he speaks to us. And Lord, we pray you continue to guide and direct and bless the rest of Momentum Conference. Lord, thanks for being with us today. For this, I ask your name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, my, my name is Chad Briscoe. I serve as the Director of Athletics at Grace College just up the road in Winona Lake, Indiana. I've been there for 14 years. And uh, it's my privilege, honor, uh, excitement to be with you this morning to talk to you about two worlds that collide every day for me and I have a great passion for and that is sports and that is ministry and the thing about it as you think about sports and ministry is that I'm assuming that all of you have a enjoyment with something in sports now that means either you play it that means you like to watch it you might like to dabble in it outside it doesn't matter the degree or level but think with me very quickly if we were to hop on a plane today and let's say we go to Brazil, or we go to Russia, or we go to Switzerland. We go someplace to a country where they do not speak the same language as we do. The one thing we can do is that I can take a basketball, I can take a soccer ball, I can take a volleyball, and I could walk into any setting in a country where I know no way of speaking the language, and I immediately have connection, and I immediately can make a relationship with somebody and not say a word. So understanding that athletics or sport has great power and great value in any setting in ministry. All of you in this room, some of you will play high school sports, some of you won't. Some of you will play middle school sports, some of you won't. Some of you will play college sports, some of you won't. It does not matter. What matters is the fact that in any type of ministry opportunity with a sport is that I want you to know that God can use that experience to shape and change somebody's life. Think with me, what are called divine appointments. Many of you in your life could go back and tell me one that you've already had. But think about if you rolled out a ball, you go someplace, it could be a YMCA, it could be to a, a local youth function, it could be at a, uh, at, at a sand volleyball tournament, it could be at a high school event, it could be a college event, go anywhere. Thinking about it from the viewpoint that you walk into that moment and in that setting, there is somebody there that you get to live and share your faith with that changes the trajectory of their life. Think about that. There will be those moments for you in the world of sport and ministry if you allow the Lord to use what is called your platform. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. I'm going to share with you just quickly my background so that way you understand how sports and ministry is something I've lived pretty much most of my life. Okay, uh, High school basketball player, college basketball player, after college went overseas, I played professionally in Sweden for six years. Came back, I worked in professional baseball for six years. Three of those years, I worked for the Texas Rangers. Former Division I basketball coach. I'm currently now an NAI college coach. I've been at all levels. I've experienced all of it. And I share that with you just because I want you to know is that ministry in all of those levels is different, yet it is still all the same. Ministry in sports does not matter what level you're at, no matter where you're at, it can be used to make a difference in someone's life. So today, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about that and what it all looks like. So when you think about sports ministry, I love this one. Feel free to write it down. Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do then, work at it with all of your heart. Now, in the world of athletics, I've never had a coach come to me as an athlete and say, hey, I'll give me 50% today. Hey, just give me 75% today. I have always had coaches, and then my coach, I want 100% from you every day. I don't want half of you. I want all of you every day. Same thing for us as, right, as Christ followers, I should do everything with all of my heart, not half of it, not a portion of it, with everything I've got every day 100% and do it all as though is that I'm working for the Lord and not for <laughs> applause from some man. Think about that. Do you walk into everything that you do in your life experience thinking, I'm going to do this for the Lord, or do we look at it as, because we're all sinful nature people, self-gratification? Well, look at me. Look at what I did. Look at what I did. Look at what I got, right? For us, it's everything being done for the Lord, not for us. So in ministry, you must look at it and approach it this way. 
of everything that we do, we do it in such a way as working for the Lord and not for man. So then what does that look like? You think that we're talking about just an athletic experience, meaning, well, Coach Briscoe, that means if I play volleyball, if I play soccer, if I play tennis, if I play basketball, if I play baseball. No, I'm talking about everything. And so what I mean by that is you in the classroom, you in the locker room, you on the team bus, you in the community at the local Walmart, you at church, I'm talking about you everywhere, knowing that everything can be done to be done for the Lord. So let me ask you this. I love this question. How many of you, you see by a show of hands in, in school, for those of you, and I know everybody's different here, but how many of you sit in the same place with the same people every day in the lunchroom? Let me see by a show of hands. Okay. Take a look around the room. As you can see, most, most, everybody, most everybody does that. I, I, want, I want to challenge you, okay, thinking about ministry. You walk into a ministry setting in the world of athletics, you may not know everybody that you're going to either play with or compete against. You're going to walk into a setting where you have to play against somebody and you don't know everybody on the other side of the, of the court. There is still ministry opportunity there for you. So you walk into the lunchroom and you sit with the same people every day. It's like, well, you're like, hey, this is my nice little comfy, sa you know, safe group that I, you know, I get along with. Now, I understand you have to have good friends, guys. Don't misunderstand me. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. However, we got to get outside the boat. Got to get outside the boat. In ministry, you can't just pick, well, I want to play these guys. I don't want to play this team over here. Or I really only want these people on my team, or I, I don't really want to hang out with them, right? You have to understand in ministry is that you're going to be able to share across a large demographic of a lot of different people, and you have to step outside. So I challenge you, as you head back to school here in a couple of weeks, is that don't sit in the same place with the same people every day in the same spot. Get outside of the boat. Use that ministry opportunity to impact and shape and change other people's lives. If I were to ask your friends that are not here, what would they tell me about you? What would they say about you as a person? What would they say to me as, as far as who you are, what you're about? All of you have a brand. All of you have a brand. If I were to pull up your social media really quick, all of you have a brand. What does that brand look like? What are you promoting? What are you also wearing? What are the things that are important to you? So when you think about ministry and sport, is that we all know if I were to say different types of things, you immediately know who wears those things. Some of you will wear a shoe because of a certain player or athlete who wears a shoe. You will wear a certain shirt because you saw somebody wearing that shirt. So it's the same thing is that if I were to put on your brand, if I were to wear you, where is it going to take me and what does it look like? In the world of ministry, who are we pointing people to and what are they seeing in us? Are they having an opportunity to see the fact that I'm going to be someone that other people can trust? I'm going to be somebody that people can confide in, that they're going to see that I am consistent, that I am the same day in and day out? How many of you have friends that I call them the roller coaster friends? Each day you have no idea what you're going to get. It's not like uh, Forrest Gump and life's like a box of chocolates you don't know what you're going to get. But some of your friends, it's like the roller coaster. It's like, man, I don't know what side of uh, the bed they got up on today. Consistency in athletics and in sport and in ministry is that you show up every day and you are the same. They know what they see, it's exactly what they're going to get. And then what, back to Colossians 3.23, we're doing everything that we do for the Lord. So what do other people say about you? How many of you have a mirror, mirror at home? You walk in, get, get all dressed up every day, right? Every day in the mirror, you look in the mirror. What, what do you have on your mirror or on the wall in your bathrooms? I want you to think about it. Do you walk into the bathroom and there may be, of course, a clock, right? You, you've got to, got to get to school, so there's a clock on the wall. Or there may be a picture on the wall. Uh, or, or maybe for some of you, there are, like, on tops of things, there may be verses at the top of your mirror. Things that you see every day that immediately you then consume every day. Because here's the thing. The minute you get up in the morning, I'm for sure for some of you, is that this is maybe the first thing you consume. You want to see what happened last night? You want to see what's going on? Where in the world of sport ministry is that where and what do I set myself in form for what it is I want to do for the day? I have this posted up in the bathroom. I have two daughters. And ever since we moved into our home in 2014, this has been on the wall the minute they walk into the bathroom. Now, it's probably more so for me than it probably is for both of them. But every day I want them to see these words. The fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and, this is the big one for sports, and self-control. Self-control. 
So many times in the world of athletics, in ministry, when you see it, how many times have you said, have you seen somebody and how they displayed themselves in a sports setting? You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, I didn't anticipate that out of that person. I thought they might be a little bit different. Meaning the fact that was it what you should have done? Was it something that should have been displayed? Was it something that should have been said? So when you think about all of these things in sport and ministry, and I'm so glad the Lord allowed the rain to die down just a little bit, is that these things must be a part of the ministry setting in the world of sports. Now, I'm as competitive as you are, okay? I don't like to lose, I, I wanna win. So what happens, what happens when you get into that athletic setting, and here's the thing, it does not matter if it's a high school college event, or guys, if it's just playing at the local YMCA, or, or, play, or playing out here with all the fun games you got going on here, I'm sure some of you are really competitive and you wanna win. What happens, in the world of sport when some of those competitive juices probably go to an unsafe or unhealthy place. And here's the thing, you are going to encounter those things. You'll encounter them. How then do I, in a ministry setting, help those experiences all go back to what? Pointing people to Jesus Christ. How do I point people to Christ through that? Meaning the fact that what, what happens when, you know, somebody maybe does me wrong, how do I respond? Somebody says something that shouldn't have been said, how do I respond? And we're going to talk a little bit about those. So I want you to know that sports and passion go together with ministry. I want you to have a passion for what it is that you do. Here's the thing. If your passion for sport is greater than your passion for Jesus Christ, your priorities are out of whack. Hear me say that again. Your passion for Christ has to be greater than your passion for sport. Has to be. And what I mean by that is that, remember, sport is the vehicle that is used to impact and shape and change a life. So what the Lord uses is the sport itself. And so those experiences create relationships, they build relationships, they create opportunities for you to live and share your faith. I love this from uh, uh, Debbie Swanson. God's always got a plan. So think about this, you walk into an athletic experience and all that you see is that, you know what, Coach Briscoe, I'm, I'm going to go play. I'm going to go play a sport, man. I'm going to go play. I'm going to go drop 25 on this. I'm going to go hit three home runs. I'm going to go run my PR today. I'm going to go do whatever. That's the first thought in the world of sports that our minds sometimes will go to. Instead of understanding what is God's divine plan for me walking into this experience, what does the Lord have for me? What does the Lord want me to do? So embracing it in such a way of understanding that God has a perfect plan. Now, the beautiful thing with God's plan is that it never fails. It never fails in the world of sports. You, you might fail. All of you in the world of sports it, that, that do sports, have, have you ever failed before? I know every, every hand in the room is going, and you know what? You're going to fail again. Baseball, softball. Uh, any, anybody baseball, softballers in the room? Let me see by a show of hands. Guys, you fail at a higher clip than any other sport. You understand that? Baseball and softball, higher failure than any other sport. Understanding you're going to fail, and it's okay part of the journey. So here's the thing though, I want you to know is that in anything in sports, the ministry opportunity with it is that whatever happens is what God wanted to have take place. And what I mean by that is the fact that the Lord talks to us about what comes out of us is the intent of our heart, but also in that what comes out, it does what God intended for it to do. So knowing that there is great ministry in that as well. How many of you have ever heard somebody say, well, you know what? The minute I step inside the lines, I'm a different, I'm a different person. I'm, I'm different. You know, coach, I gotta, I gotta, it's almost kind of like the, the Clark Kent. It's like, I gotta take my glasses off, pull off my chest, and I gotta walk into this, and I gotta be Superman. And then after it's over, I'll put my suit back on, I'll put my glasses on, then I'm, I'm kind of back to Clark Kent, right? Guys, in, in the world of sport ministry, we, we are the same in the season, and we're the same out of the season. We're the same inside the lines, and we're the same outside the lines. There is no, there is no difference. Because here's the fact of understanding, remember, people are always always watching you. And there are people who want to emulate you. And there are people who see something in you that, you know what, might be just a little bit different. And when they see that thing's a little bit different, then if you know what happens? There's this big window that opens up. They come in and say, man, no, Jackson, what's different about you? Why, what's different? And all of a sudden there's this great door created for Jackson for him to live and share his faith with somebody. Is that this is the way you have to look at me. So many times in the world of sports, we just get here, we think sport, it's, it's a scouting report, it's game, it's preparation, it's what I've got to do, and I've got to go win. 
And then we fail to, to see that the Lord wants all of that to be ministry. Guys, I've heard all of you over here do wonderful praise and worship. I hear all of you singing. You're great in the mosh pit, man. You guys are knocking it out of the park down there. You trample me in the bottom of that, you know, down there. So have you ever thought about athletics being a spiritual act of worship as well? Have you ever heard that? Do you understand that anything you do in sports is just like you sitting over there and singing or standing up for your church? It's a spiritual act of worship. And so embracing that spiritual act of worship, God creates really cool opportunities for you. Now, let me ask you this. Let me answer for me. Who controls your emotions? Who controls your emotions? Anybody? Somebody tell me. Who? Yeah, yourself, right? Last time I checked, at the end of the day, my emotions, how I want to respond to anything, I control that and nobody else. So understanding the world of ministry, of sports, is a fact as we talked about competition. Things can get really heated really quick in some settings. How do I then respond in those moments? How do I allow my emotions to either get the best of me or be used in the best of me to again reflect Jesus Christ? It is my, it is my choice. Nobody else's choice, it is mine. So write this one down for me. Talent is a gift. But character is a choice. And what I mean by character, your ministry. Your ministry is a choice. All of you have talent. All of you in this room have a talent in some capacity for something with sport, meaning the fact that you like to either watch it or you like to consume it or you like to participate in it. But understanding that every day we have choices. So then think about this. I want you to know ministry in sport is a choice. I choose to walk into a sports setting and I choose just to show up and play, I choose just to show up and do my part, or I can show up and look at it as ministry. And when I worked for the Texas Rangers, I had the opportunity with uh, professional baseball players at different times to do one of two things. I either got to help them move from one level to the next, or I had to take them to the airport and I had to send them home. Two different experiences, right? One guy is just told that his career basically is over, and I'm putting him on a plane, and i got to send him home. Then there's other guys that just got the call to go to Arlington, Texas, and I got to put him on the plane, and I got to send him to fulfill a childhood dream. Do you think that in both settings there's a ministry opportunity? Yeah. To be able to console someone who has no idea what's going to happen next, his entire life has been wrapped up in the identity of playing Major League Baseball, and he just got cut. And so I get to come alongside of him and I get to tell him, you know what, God has a plan for your life and I don't know exactly what it is, but you know what, God has a plan for you and I'm praying for you. Or on the flip side, hey, you get to fulfill a dream. Hey, remember when you get there, remember the ministry opportunities you have now that your platform has just gotten to the biggest stage it could ever get to and do not screw it up, right? Ministry opportunities come in a lot of different forms and a lot of different shapes and sizes. We have to be ready for all of them. We have to be ready for all of them. Now, those of you in the room who do sports, <clears throat> and I know there's a lot of you that do, I am sure at some point in time you have said to yourself, you know what, Coach Briscoe, I want a day off. I'm tired physically, mentally. Um, I've done a lot. Man, I just want to sit and take a day where I can just relax and maybe, you know, watch ESPN and eat some Twinkies and just kind of hang out. Okay, great. I, I want all of you to have that day, all right? But understand in the world of ministry, in the world of ministry, it's very important for you to understand, I want you to write this one down, is that your example, your example never gets a day off, ever. So this is the old cliche thing that you hear a lot of people will say, is that I'm sure every day you get up, you, you're going to uh, brush your teeth. M many of you, hopefully, you know, will, will, will brush your hair almost every day. And, and many of you will probably take a shower almost every day, all right? So, so follow me with me. There are things, you know, if you're going to eat every day, there are things that are consistent in your life that you will constantly always do over and over every day. In the world of sports ministry, in the world of sports ministry, your example does that same thing. It doesn't get a day off. It's consistent, it's constant. It does not change like the shifting shadows. Is the fact that you are always on par with exactly what it is your ministry opportunity is. Now, you're just like me and I'm just like you is that we're all imperfect people and I'm going to fail. Guys, I am old and I have failed a lot of times and I'm going to fail a lot more times. However, what do we pursue? Understand the world of athletics? Guys, you are never, ever standing still. You are either moving forward or you are moving backwards. You cannot stand still. You get to choose which way you go. 
So in the same thing with ministry, I get to choose. Do I, do I move forward with ministry or do I not? Taking advantage of those opportunities become critically, critically important. So then thinking about it for you, growing spiritually, building your own character, and then serving others. It looks different for everyone. It looks different for everybody in ministry. You say, well, Coach Briscoe, you know what? I'm not going to be the starting uh, quarterback on my high school football team. Okay. Coach Briscoe, I'm not going to be the number one uh, cross-country runner in my cross-country high school team. Okay. I'm not going to be the number one bowler for my high school team. Okay. Doesn't matter. Great. Are you, are you in the arena? Yes, Coach Briscoe, I am there, a part of it. Great. You know what? There's ministry opportunity for you. No matter where you are, no matter where you're at, every opportunity is ministry. So then to think about it, you're going to say, well, Coach Briscoe, nobody's going to listen to me unless I'm playing. Nobody cares about what I'm doing unless I am actually considered like part of, there's ministry everywhere. Every last one of you, where you are strategically placed in life at the schools where you're at, God has a divine plan and purpose for exactly where you are at. And you know what? You are in places doing ministry. You know what? I will never be able to go. I can't go there. Only you are there, strategically placed to do what God has called you to do. So knowing these words become critically important to be able to do it. How many, uh, let me see any uh, soccer, soccer guys or gals in the room. Any soccer people? Okay, good. I'm going to hope that one of you can tell me who is the pitcher of on the left. Anybody give me a, a name there? Zinedine Zidane. Yes, your name is? Ethan. Let's give a round of applause to Ethan, man. Let's go. Ethan, well done, man. So this is, for those of you who don't know, Zinedine Zidane. He is what we consider the Michael Jordan or the LeBron James, whichever basketball player or whichever sport you want to consider the best, the Serena Williams. Um, this is that person for soccer in the country of France. Back in the day, when he was still playing, there's this uh, tournament called the World Cup. You may have heard of it. World Cup happens every four years. All of the countries in the world, they qualify to go play in this tournament. It's a big deal. Everybody kind of watches it on TV. Last game, the championship game against Italy. The last game that he is going to play in, he decides to get upset at, as you can see, the opponent. The opponent supposedly said something about something that irritated or upset him. He decides to headbutt the guy, <clears throat> gets thrown out of the game, gets thrown out of the match. It is the last soccer match he ever played in his entire life. This is how he is remembered. So my question to you, or my thought to you is this. Some of you in the room who play high school sports, let me see by a show of hands who, who've got high school or middle school sports in here. Okay, so a, a large majority of you, all right. So think with me really quick. For those of you that are at the high school level, this past year you played for a team and there were seniors who graduated and left the team. I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm going to say that some of those who graduated from that team, you are very glad and very excited that they will not be on the team next year, okay? And by the chuckles in the room, I, I, I guess I can tell some, you can tell me some stories, all right? Now, on the flip side of that, there are probably some teammates who graduated that, let's look the opposite approach. You are very sad that they are done because of the fact they were such great leaders and great motivators and added such great value to the team experience. So you have both sides of the coin. It is what's called a legacy. So I want you to think about today is that when we get to the end of the road for you, what do you want your legacy to be? How do you want to be remembered when you are done? Do you want, after you have graduated, and I ask that same question to students who sit here in a couple of years after you're gone, and I say that same thing, which side of the fence are they gonna be on when they think of you? And the reason I, I share that with you is here's the thing you must understand. In the world of sports and ministry, you have a legacy, regardless if it is high school, college, middle school, all of you have a legacy that you leave. What does that legacy look like? What do you want it to be? Are they going to say that you are the one who showed up every day and you were consistent? You were the one who added value? You were the one that came in with a smile on your face? You were the one that made everybody feel better? You were the one that cared about everybody else? Or are they going to walk in and say you were the one who sucked the life out of the battery and you didn't know who was going to show up and you wanted to talk bad about the teammate and talk bad about the coach and talk bad about the principal or whatever? What, what type of teammate, what type of legacy do you want to leave? 
This is where ministry 101 in the world of sports, you must understand that your platform is higher. Your platform is different. And what I mean by that is think, think, think with me is that when you walk up and down the halls of your school and you have the uniform on, is that yes, you are looked at a little bit different. So you must understand you have a greater responsibility. You have a great responsibility, not only to wear the uniform the right way, but also to conduct yourself in, in a manner that's worthy of Jesus Christ. Because again, people watch you, people want to emulate you, people then want to hopefully then do what it is that you're doing. But here's the thing, you leave the legacy, nobody else. Can't be somebody else's journey. See, here's the thing. You, you are in a lane, okay? We watched, the, we watched 100 sprints in the Olympics. There's nine lanes. There's nine people. It's not two people in one lane. You have your race and your race alone, and you run it. And God is with you when you run that race. But guys, I can't look to the right, and I can't look to the left and go, well, well Coach Briscoe, why isn't my journey like this one over here? Well, why can't my journey be like this one over here? Huh? God's got your divine plan. It is your journey, and it is your ministry. So what do other people see in you? I asked a question earlier. What do people say? Now what is it? What do people see? I tell my student athletes all the time at Grace, here, listen, don't tell me, don't tell me, go show me. I don't want to hear you, I want to see it. Because you know what? All of us get to see, right? If I see Christ emulated in what you're doing, you know what? Man, then we're living spot on. If, if I were to ask all of you, I, I want to win, I want to do well, I want to be successful, well, sure, everybody's going to say that. But, but are you going to do what it takes to get there? Are you going to be committed to doing it? Not everybody wants to sign up for that. That is a different realm in a different place. So where does all of this start? Where does all of this start? This all starts with you holding yourself accountable. How many of you right now have teammates who do not like that word? Anybody? Yes. Accountability, listen, accountability in sports and ministry is one of those big, powerful words that not everybody wants in their vocabulary. They don't want it. Because here's the thing, Coach Briscoe, I want it when it's good for me. Coach Briscoe, I'll do it when I feel like it's okay for me. I don't want to go through it with hard. I don't want to go through it with difficulty. I want to do it when it's just good for me. And so I, I'm okay if you hold me accountable when it comes time for preseason. I was talking to this gentleman right here. He's going to Lancaster Bible and play soccer in the fall. He's getting ready to go for preseason. It's like, well, yeah, during preseason, everybody wants to be held accountable because I'm ready for the season. But then what does it look like in January and February for his teammates when the season's over? Don't want, we're going to be held accountable. No, I don't want to be held accountable in January and February. I want to do what I want to do. So the ministry piece for us, this is why ministry never gets a day off. There's ministry opportunity and all of these other things. Guys, think about all of the good things in your sport experience and all of the tough things in your sport experience. Back to the baseball, sitting with a guy who just got called up to the major leagues, a guy who got cut. I've sat with a student athlete during a game when they just blew their ACL out and they think their life is over. I've sat with a student athlete after doing something really great and they've won a national championship and they feel like they're at the greatest, highest level they've ever been. The highs and lows of athletics Every life lesson is taught there. Every life lesson. You get to enter into some tough situations, vulnerable people, vulnerable, of where you can have impact, lasting change in somebody's life. So think about it like this. Lots of choices. Lots of choices. How many of you <clears throat> understand and when you look at living your faith, we just talked about it. Don't tell me, go show me. The picture on the left, what does it look like for you after an athletic experience of going through the line? So here's the experience I'll tell you, all right? So <clears throat> if I were to, uh, if you were to contact us at Grace and say, hey, I, I, you know, I'd like to learn more about Grace Athletics. What, what do you think is the very first thing, if I don't know anything about you, what do you think is the very first thing our coaches are going to do when it comes to checking on who you are as a person? What do you think is the first thing we're going to do? Anybody tell me? What do you think is the first thing we're going to do? Social media. Your name is? Josiah. Let's give Josiah a round of applause. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Josiah. I'm going to look at your social media. All right. Now, a couple of things with your social media, because I'm assuming uh, most all of you, if not all of you, have it in the room. All right. Here's a couple of things. I want to look at what you post. I'm going to look at what you say. And then here's the other thing. I want to look at what you like. I want all of you very quickly to understand that when you click the like button, you have put your stamp of approval on it. How many of you have ever liked something and didn't watch it to the end? How many of you have liked something you didn't see everything that happened within it? Be very, very careful with what it is that you like. 
It follows you. It stays with you. Understanding the social media presence that you have, again, another great platform to draw people to Christ. So I've checked out your social media. Number two, all of you know, you got to have grades, got to get good grades. So making sure your grades are taken care of. Those two things are very good. Okay, then number three, if those things check out, you know what? Coach feels like he wants to come watch he or she play. We're going to come watch you play. However, I tell my coaches to do one thing. Look at the schedule, look at where they're playing, and go to something when you know they are going to fail and lose. Do not go when they are going to win. Don't go to the game when you know they're going to blow a team out and win by 40. Why? Because I know whatever last one of you look like when you win. You look just like me up here. Hey, I had a smile on my face. Yeah, I just won, coach. Yeah, everything's good. What, what do you look like in the moment of adversity when it didn't go your way? What happens, what do you look like when you miss the game-winning shot? What happens when somebody just edges you out at the cross-country line and you finish second and they finish first? What do you look like when you have to battle adversity? That's when I really want to see you. Because here's the thing, you know why? It tells me a lot about you. And then think about this. How you walk through this line after a game may be more important than anything you just did in the game. Think about that. Because here's the thing, right? People watching, my, my, my 10-year-old daughter sitting in the stands watching you, the, the, the young kids that want your autograph after an event, the people in the community, the old, the old guy sitting on the, uh, the front row who comes to watch you play all the time, he's watching you. Your, your classmates, the big, the big section of all your students dressed up and whatever coming to watch you, everybody has a front row seat to your platform, and that is where ministry happens. That's how you must approach it, is that ministry opportunity. So watching go through the line, do you, do, you, do you throw your head back? Do you throw your head out there? Do you not look them in the eye? Do you, do you not take them, shake their hand and then look them in the eye when, you, when you're talking to them? Of understanding that is important of how you represent in the moments of adversity when you don't get what it is that you wanted or it doesn't go the way that you wanted it to go. There is great power and again, it is seen every day. So write this one down. We are what we repeatedly do. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but it is a habit. Now, the reason the word excellence is underlined <clears throat> is because I want you to put any word in there that you want. Put in ministry, academics, <clears throat> social media, my social life, my integrity. Put in there any word that you, any word that you want. So think about, it's not an act, but it is a habit. Some of you in this room right now have habits that you need to get rid of immediately. <clears throat> Guys, think about this. You guys have been uh, nestled here in this, in this great place for several days where you have been given incredible tools during momentum to go back and to shape not only your life, but to change the life of everybody around you. You've been given that tool. The travesty is the fact that if you go home and you do nothing with it, for all of us, we have got to go back and take what it is you gave this week and go change the world for Jesus Christ. So then understanding is that the habits you have, what, what do you do, at, what are your habits? And you've come here this week and everything that you normally do, it's all changed, right? You've had to get up early, you've had to be here, you've had to go there. I, I don't get to do all the things that I normally do at home. So understanding what habits do you have at home that need to change. Then think about what new habits have you created here that need to go home and need to continue. You've been in the Word, you've been praying, you've been communicating. There's some wonderful things you've done this week that you need to go home and you need to continue them. So understanding all of these habits are important, both good and bad. I grew up in uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Roanoke, Virginia is home for me, where I was born and raised. And I lived very close to the birthplace of Booker T. Washington. And if you have never studied or learned anything about Booker T. Washington, I am giving you an assignment, and it is your job to look him up, and it is your job to learn about the incredible man of faith, integrity, and also ministry that he was. And Booker T. Washington, for uh, many of us, you may not know, would walk days upon days to get to a place where he could learn and grow with education. And he talked about one of his great quotes. He said, a lie does not become truth, wrong does not become right, and evil does not become good just because it's accepted by the majority. So here's the thing. In the world of athletics, the majority accepts trash talking. The majority accepts you showing somebody up. The majority accepts four-letter words flying out of your mouth. 
The majority accepts you trampling on somebody to make yourself look good. That is what the majority of the world will accept in the world of athletics. Our job as Christ followers got to be different. I am in this world, but I am not of this world. You are called to be separate, to be different. How many times have you turned on ESPN and the very headline story was somebody who screwed up and did something they shouldn't do? And you're sitting there going, my goodness, you are getting paid all of this money and you can't do what's right? Have you ever thought that? I think that all the time I look at them like, what the heck? What are, you, what are you doing? Why can't you do what you are called to do and do it the right way? All of these other things that the world says it's okay to do distracts you. Think about the scouting report. Those of you who play sports, you get a scouting report of how to beat your opponent. I want you to know that the devil has a scouting report on every one of you. Think about that. What's a scouting report on you? How do I get to you? And you know what? The devil pulls out the playbook every day, and he wants you. What, what's the Bible tell us? The devil comes to do three things. Kill, steal, and destroy. Period. That is it. Understanding your ministry, again, you walk into a sport ministry setting, you know what? You get to shape and change a life for Jesus Christ. You have the power to do that every day. So embracing and understanding that you are not the majority. Proverbs 22, 1. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. And favor is better than silver or gold. A good name. Your name, right? The name on the back of the shirt. You've all heard, play for the name on the front of the shirt, not the name on the back of the shirt. However, there has to be somebody who occupies that uniform. There's somebody in the uniform. That is you. What do you look like? Your name. Your name. Your brand, right? Go back to your social media. What does your brand look like? Is the fact that in the ministry setting, the platform piece is that it is so important. So think about this. This is, how, this is what athletics looks like, okay? Is that normal students every day in school, okay? Normal students, up and down the row, up and down, normal students, okay? This is you as an athlete. This is you. Your platform is different. Is the fact that you walk into an athletic setting, people see you differently because of the fact that your platform is just different. So then what do you do from this position? Do I do ministry? Do I impact and shape and change lives? Do I speak truth? Do I speak the truth in love? Do I speak about Jesus Christ to other people in this setting? That is back to the choice that you get every day. It is a choice that we are to, of course, embrace as well. So give me some of the great names. Give me some of the great names in sports. Give me some names. Who you got for me? Who are, who are the great ones? Who are, who are the ones that you follow? Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth, classic oldie. Number three, New York Yankees. The Red Sox sold him really cheap, and they've still regret it to this day. So, yeah, Babe Ruth was great. Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah, for those of you, you, you understand you're in Indiana, and we don't like the Patriots here. You understand that, right? Okay. All right, you do not get a T-shirt for that. <laughs> That's all right. You're good. You're good. He's a great one. He's a great one. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron another good one. Mike Trout. Mike Trout, another good one. Katie Ledecky, Katie Ledecky Yes. Everybody knows who Kayla Decky is. If you don't know who Kayla Decky is, you got to look her up, man. She is a, she's an incredible swimmer. Incredible. Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt. Yeah, he runs really fast, by the way. Yes. Uh, Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yes, Ronaldo. Good. Messi. Messi. Yes, Messi. My daughter just got her picture made with a stand-up Messi. Uh, we were on vacation, and she saw Messi, and she wanted a T-shirt. I said, you know, that's not him. Oh, yeah, but it's picture. So, yeah, she got a picture made with Messi. So, yeah. Who? Albert Pujols. Cal Ripken Jr., yes, the Iron Man, the Iron Man. Anybody know who Cal Ripken played the most consecutive games in Major League Baseball than any other player? Most consecutive games. Incredible workhorse. Okay, so these are all great names of people who have done great accomplishments in the world of athletics. Let me ask you your name, and then back to the question I ask, what would they tell me about you? What are some of the words that if I say your name, what are some of the words that you want to resonate with you as someone in the world of sports. Give me some words. Give me some words. If I were to say you, Jackson? Leader. Leader. It's a good one. What else? Motivator. Motivator. What else you got? Hard worker. Hard worker. I like that. Role model. Uh, Charles Barkley does it. No, I don't want you to be no role model. I ain't no role model, Charles Barkley says, right? What else? What other words do you say about you? What other words? Discipline. Discipline. Love that one. What else? 
What else you got for me? Come on. You're my leaders. Independent. These are all wonderful words. These are all things that make up who you are. Christ follower. Christ ambassador. Christmanship. Sportsmanship. Character. All of these things need to be part of your constant vocabulary. These are some of the great names. Can somebody tell me what the last name at the bottom is, who that is? Everybody knows Serena Williams. Everybody knows Michael Jordan. Everybody knows Derek Jeter. Anybody tell me who the bottom one is? Anybody? Anybody know? You guys may have remembered a um, situation that happened uh, a couple of years ago with a boys soccer team. They went cave diving in the Philippines, got stuck. You guys remember this story? Went with the team, their coach, took them into this cave. You got a soccer coach, took a team into a cave, and all of a sudden they're stuck and they can't get out. I've thought about this team multiple times, and I'm hoping eventually we'll get a 30 for 30 for them, or we're going to get a book, or we're going to get something about them. You think about sport ministry. Here you are, a coach and a team, and you are in a cave, and you have no idea if you're going to live or if you are going to die. In that moment, in that moment of the uncertainty, I want to know, how did the coach motivate his team every day? How did the players motivate themselves to live every day? And how did you not get to a place of just... It's over. We're going to walk into sports settings, guys, this upcoming year. You're not going to have that life situation. You're going to be able to finish practice and go home, and you're going to be okay. You're going to finish a game, and you're going to go home, and you're going to be okay. You're not worried about life and death. But understanding the ministry opportunity in every setting, I'm sure within that cave, in those 12, 14, 15 guys or whatever, I'm sure there were some really, really deep life conversations. How many of you have teammates that you need to go deeper with? I don't, I, don't, I don't want surface. Christ does not want us to be on the surface, guys. Christ wants us to go deep. You got to go deep with people. So this guy, that Suman Gunan. For those of you who don't know, this was the one Navy SEAL who lost his life in that rescue. So their whole team, the coach, everybody walked away, thank the Lord, except for one Navy SEAL, this guy. He gave the ultimate sacrifice to take care of a soccer team and a coach. I share this with you, understanding is that, guys, every day you must make the ultimate sacrifices to live and to share your faith every day. You don't put it in a box. You don't put it in your back pocket and you hide it away. You share and live your faith every day. Because I, I don't know if I get tomorrow. I don't know if you get tomorrow. It's kind of guaranteed for you tomorrow. What did I do today? And remember, the only thing that you do for Christ in the world of sports is the only thing that matters. Nothing else matters, guys. Only what we do for Christ. So where does it start? Where does it end? It's you. The most powerful leadership tool that you have is your example. That means, right, back to what I said, hey, don't tell me, go show me. Don't tell me about it, go show me. This is where that comes in. Your powerful leadership tool, it is your example for people to see, for people to emulate, for people to follow, for people to say, you know what, I want to do what it is that they do. I want to act like that. Or to give them the fortitude and the ability to do something right because they saw you do it. That's where that comes into play. And so the ministry piece of that is extremely, extremely powerful. Okay, we can all catch a cold. And we can catch it from each other. I'm sure many of them really unfortunately have had COVID as well. You caught that from somebody. These things are also contagious for you in the world of sports. Your spiritual walk, your character, your leadership, and then I also want you to know your love for Jesus. I tell my wife and my kids, I've got two daughters, I tell them every day that I love them, regardless if they want to hear it from me or not. I never want them to forget. They will always hear me every day tell them I love them. But how many times do I walk out every day and tell people I love Jesus? I don't do that every day. I should. I want people to know. I, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I love Jesus. That is where I stand. That is who has given me life. That is who allows me to do what I do every day. And it is who I owe everything to who died on the cross for my sins every day. I love Jesus. You have the ability to love others. Love others well. Love others when it's hard. It's always easy to do it when it's nice and fun and everything's great. It's hard to love people when things are hard. So understanding what it is. Somebody tell me, what's this a picture of? Anybody know what are these pictures of? Somebody tell me. School pictures, close. What? Who said that? You didn't? Yep. Your name is? Vanessa. Congratulations. Round of applause for her, please. Mug shots. 
I, I just want you to know, I don't, I don't do this in, in a way to make things bad. I want you to understand is that, guys, you and I are one decision away from that every day. We're one decision away. You must understand your ministry platform in athletics, you must use it always the right way. And then here's the other thing, too. Do I have any uh, baseball players in the room? Let me see baseball players. Do I have any catchers? Any catchers? All right, all my catchers stand up. I've got three catchers here. Three catch, four catchers. Okay, I got four catchers, five catchers. Oh, okay, you decided to be a catcher? All right, okay, you decided to be a catcher. All right, okay. I got five catchers here, okay? Those of you that are catchers, it is time for you to catch a game. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's time for you to go catch. What are you going to do? What's that? You're going to catch the ball. It's exactly right. Before you catch the ball and before you uh, bend, bend your knees and go into a, 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 a position that I can't go anymore, I'm too old to do it, okay? What, what do you have to put on before you get there? What do you got to do? Put on your gear, okay? What, what are some of the pieces of gear? What do you got to put on? Mask. Mask. Chest protector. Chest protector. Shin guards. Glove. Glove. They covered off a cup, yeah, put the cup on. All right, round of applause for these guys. Have a seat. Very good. Very good. Okay. These guys are not going to go catch a baseball game without putting on what's called their gear. I can't catch without my gear on because it's going to protect me. All right? Think about this. How many of us every day get up and then you know what we don't do is we don't put on the full armor of God. Don't put on the full armor of God. I just get up and I go to school, Coach Briscoe. I just get up and I go drive the car, Coach Briscoe. I just get up and go do. I don't put on the full armor of God. If you were to look at, again, the book of Ephesians, if you have not read the book of Ephesians, guys, read the book of Ephesians. You must, every day, in everything that you say and everything that you do, you got to put on the full armor of God. So in your ministry, your sport ministry, guys, you got to put your gear on. you got to put your gear on. Because you know what? You're going to be surrounded by a lot of people who have no knowledge, nor do they care, other than the fact that they want to win. That's it. I just want to win. I don't care about anything else. And I will do whatever. Do you understand, guys, in the world of athletics, think about this. It's a pyramid. Is that the lot higher you go, the longer you play in sports, your moral compass goes down. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the moral compass, the higher you go, goes less. Because at the end of the day, in the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, winning is it. And if you don't do it, you are gone. So for us in ministry in sports, guys, we have to take a total different approach. Ministry is where life change happens. Life change happens every day. So let me ask you this. Go to your mind really quick. If I say four-letter word, where does your mind go? Your mind immediately goes to something bad. In the world of sports, you hear four-letter words all the time, or you hear bad words. It's part of a normal vocabulary. It should not be part of your vocabulary. I want you to know that just because some guy says a bad word does not make them any more of a man than somebody who doesn't doesn't need to be part of your vocabulary. So in your mind, you go to a four-letter word. However, in our part of ministry, this is the four-letter word you should never say. Easy. Easy is the worst four-letter word you can ever have a part of your vocabulary. In life, that's what people want to do. People want what is easy. Because what's easy, right, it's easy for me to do, right? I don't have to work hard. I don't have to put any effort into it. Have you ever, have you ever thought about, you know, being a part of teams? Does everybody sign up to do it? No. Why? Because it's hard. Not everybody wants to make the commitment. Not everybody wants to be held accountable. I just want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, Coach Briscoe. I don't want to have to be held accountable to that. It is hard, but do what's right, not what is hard. Monty Williams, head coach, Phoenix Suns. Everything you want in life is on the other side of hard. Everything you want in life. Guys, ministry is hard. It is not easy. Ministry is hard. However, you know what? All of you are called to minister. Every last one of you in this room are called to go make disciples. Go live your faith and impact other people's lives. So write this one down. A leader, this is you. We're about to finish up. A leader, three things. Knows the way, goes the way, shows the way. Three things you do. A leader is the one living your faith in ministry setting. A leader is the one who knows the way, goes the way, shows the way. I want you to know that as you sign up for ministry opportunities in your life, guys, these are the things that you are able to do. So many times in the world of athletics, I get students who come to me with their hand held out and they say, Coach Briscoe, what do I, what do I get? What, what, what do I get? It's the way sports is. Think about ministry. Ministry for me in sports is the fact that you get to serve somebody else. It's the way I've always looked at sports. So for you, 
in ministry settings, how you serve other people becomes critically important. Are you, when it comes time to eat, are you the first one who gets in line? When it comes time for things being passed out, are you wanting to be the first one in line to get yours first? Or do you make sure that everybody is taken care of and then you know what, I'll be the last one off the bus, I'll be the last one out of the locker room, make sure everything's cleaned up. I wanna make sure that everything is in working order when it comes time to serve somebody else. How many of you in the room who are upperclassmen take time to go invest in the freshmen who are walking into it as deer in headlights who have never had the experience? How many of you go invest in them and take time for them and help them along the way? That's what you should do. That is you in ministry. That is you changing and impacting a life. And a life only lived for others is a life worthwhile. Now, here's the thing. Understand this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. When you decide to use ministry in the sports setting, guys, you must understand it is not the norm. It looks different. Not everybody wants to do it. So this is you by yourself. And understand that the minute you do this, you know what? People will follow you. There are people who do not have the fortitude or the ability to do it, but the minute you do it, you know what? They want to follow you and they want to be just like you because they see somebody who did it and set the example. That's you. Go and do that. Go set that example. Finishing up here, you're getting ready to walk in, guys, to, and, and my, my uh, you know, everybody has a personal opinion. The next speaker, Shep, he's a very close friend of mine. Your life is about to be changed in the next hour and a half. It's going to be changed. This is a mural in Orlando, Florida. This mural changed Shep's life. Shep talks about the fact that he was walking home from school one day. Ministry, okay? Think about ministry. Walking home from school one day and he saw this mural on this wall. And as you can see, it says, Romans 12, 2, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And as it goes on, by the renewing of your mind, be different. And as you can see in this mural, all of the fish are going in one direction except for one fish. One fish. This wall changed Shep's life. He walked by this going home from school and he saw it. And again, right? Don't tell me. Go show me. Got to see it. I got to see it emulated in your life. He looked at this and he saw it and it forever changed the trajectory of his life. So this is Shep today. As you can see, Shep is an incredible motivational evangelist speaker. He is on the circuit with every major Division I football team. I talked with him last night. The entire month of August, he is speaking to a Division I football team every day the month of August. Every day. 29 straight days with 29 Division I football teams. That's who you're about to hear here in 30 minutes. Understanding the ministry opportunities for you, faith and sport, is that it can change the outcome, not only of your life, but of somebody else's life. Embrace that opportunity and embrace that experience. Last but not least, I wanted to leave you with this. Is that whether I'm a Super Bowl champ or a regular guy stocking groceries, sharing my faith and glorifying Jesus is the central focus of my time on this earth. Kurt Warner, Super Bowl champion quarterback. It's the greatest way to sum it up is that your faith, guys, no matter where you go, live it out, share it, speak it, live it, and give it away every day. I want you to know it's been great to be with you today. Thanks for your time. I pray the Lord will bless all of you as you head into your upcoming school year. May you be the light no matter where you go. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. Great to be with you. Have a great day.